Now I've been backpacking for close to three decades and in that time I have slept on every style of sleeping pad you can imagine and had some really rough nights of sleep and some really great nights of sleep. You just need to understand what goes into a pad to make it comfortable to get a good enjoyable night of sleep. The first thing to break down and understand is how important your sleeping pad is to the warmth of your entire sleep system. You may think that if I've got a zero degree sleeping bag and I'm in 30 degree temperatures, that that is gonna be more than enough to keep me warm through the night of sleep. That can't always be true because when you've got a sleeping bag, you are laying down on top of what is supposed to have a loft to it. So you're compressing and just smashing that down insulation. But understanding that your sleeping pad is half of your warmth when it comes to your entire sleep system. You wanna make sure that you've got an insulated sleeping pad that is going to match the weather conditions and the temperatures that you're gonna experience out on the trips that you're going on. So for example, let's talk about this pad here in front of me. This is a pad from Trekology called the UL80. This is a very affordable sleeping pad. And when you're first looking at pads, you're probably thinking, oh, I don't need to spend that much. What's critical to understand is typically a low cost sleeping pad is not going to have the necessary insulation to keep you warm for the majority of the temperatures you're going out in, except for like dead summer. If you are out and it's not getting below like 50, 60 degrees at night, then something like this will absolutely work just fine. But then you want to move up into something that is actually going to provide you a barrier of insulation from the cold ground to your body. It is really, really key to understand that your pad is what is insulating you from the cold ground and providing that protection and allowing your body heat to come back to you so that you're able to stay warm and have a good night of sleep. Let's break down that idea a little bit more and move on to item number two, which is understanding R value. R value is the baseline for choosing a sleeping pad for the temperatures that you're gonna be sleeping in. The lower the R value, the colder that pad is going to sleep. The higher the R value, the warmer that pad is going to sleep because higher R value means more insulation is inside of the pad or technology for it to provide a barrier between the cold ground and your body so that you are able to sleep warm. R value is just a baseline though. It is a number that comes from a controlled environment in a laboratory, basically. It's important to understand though that not all pads really hit that R value rating that they are uh, claiming or advertising they have. For example, <laughs> the Zoom UL that I've already talked about here a little bit from Big Agnes has a claimed R value of over four, but real world experience is showing that this pad is probably closer to two, two and a half for an R value. The problem is when this pad is on the ground, you've got a piece of mylar film that's on the inside of the pad here. That mylar film is not providing 100% coverage from you and the ground. So there are holes in the insulation at all of these weld points essentially that is allowing cold air to move from the ground up through to your back. In a controlled environment, yeah, they tested this and got an R value of four, but real world, it's not sleeping that warm. So it's important to do your research and know what the pad is providing from real world experience. As another example, this is the XPED Ultra 7R. This has a down insulation inside of it. So it's not using a mylar film for you to get that insulation uh, barrier between you and the cold ground. Item number three here is the width of your pad and the size of your pad is so important to getting a comfortable sleep experience. What I'm on here is a 20 inch wide sleeping pad. And as a back sleeper or a side sleeper, it's really not a great option. It just in the sense that my elbows, 
like all they want to do is fall off the side of the pad. And if this was a mummy shaped tapered pad, that would be even worse. And so I really don't love 20 inch wide pads. They have their place. They're good in the sense of if I am sharing a tent with somebody and I don't have a tent that can handle a 25 inch wide pad or two of them, then you're gonna need a 20 inch wide, but it just is not as comfortable as a 25 inch wide pad. See how much more space I have on the sides for my elbows to not fall off. And honestly, it's just so much more comfortable. Just get a 25 inch wide pad. Majority of us don't share a tent with somebody else. And if we do, you're probably gonna get a three person tent anyway to make it possible for you to get all of your gear and stuff inside of the tent. So 25 inch wide pad, so much more comfortable, just the better option, well worth that extra weight. Just do it, it's better. The last thing I wish I knew sooner about buying my first sleeping pad is buying the pad based off of the baffle style and not specifically on the weight of the pad. I got caught up early on in the ultralight mindset of just trying to be as lightweight as possible and the pad that I went with was the Thermarest NeoAir X-Lite. And that pad is super lightweight. It is a really, really nice sleeping pad, but it is also one of the most uncomfortable sleeping pads on the market, in my opinion. So if I'm choosing a pad, I want to get a baffle style that I know is going to be comfortable. And it is proven that these like quilted type of baffles that you see here on the zoom or on the Etherlite XT from Sea to Summit, as well as many other pads, is the most comfortable way to sleep. Because each of these little pockets here, these little cells, provide area of support for your back to be able to uh, spread that body weight across and just enjoy yourself on a more comfortable sleep. The problem with the NeoAir and with similar horizontal style baffles like this, this pad's actually not too terrible. What I don't like about the NeoAir is that the baffle sizes are really small. And so it doesn't support very well across the length of the pad. And it's just not a comfortable pad. This Trekology pad does pretty good for having a bit wider baffles, but it's not as comfortable as this quilted pattern. And then the middle ground is going to be something like these vertical baffles that you have on like these X-Ped pads. This is pretty comfortable, uh, especially because this has a really soft fabric and so it does allow for a bit of squish <laughs> for your body and it just supports your body really well. On the quilted pattern here on the Zoom, it's just the most supportive option. And so this gives me way more comfort, a way better sleep experience than all of these combined. And I like it. This is the way to go.